Okay, so on the outside looking in, San Antonio, Houston, Blazers, Utah. I wouldn't I wouldn't group I wouldn't group Utah with those guys just because of what you said earlier. Like yeah. they they're not there yet, but they have enough to to keep it in. They were more last year. They're yeah. more competitive yeah. too. Yeah. Now Houston yeah. and and like teams like that, they're gonna have to do some work. Obviously, you added a Van Vliet, you added a Dylan Brooks, yeah. Jeff Green, Landell. But how's it all gonna come together? Like, yeah. I wonder how quickly Ime can figure things out while also trying to build up Jalen Green and Jabari Smith Jr. I don't know if you can do the two timelines. You can't do it. What's the pressure like in Houston right now? I mean, to win or to like just to get better. To win, like to like, they have to get to the playoffs this year. They have to. Like, there's no, there is no equation I can think of where they miss the playoffs after spending all that money. Yeah. And things are just peachy keen. It's not going to happen. Like, they have to. You gave Fred Van Vliet 130 million dollars. You gave yeah. Dylan Brooks 80 million dollars. Like, that's there's a, that comes with the expectation of they're going to win and they're going to win now. So, what are the odds of them making the postseason? What would you put them at? I so it's, <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's not great. I, 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 that was a great answer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, cause, because just because I just don't know how you can mesh the two timelines. Like, yeah. your first timeline was already messed up from the get-go because the development of Jalen Green and Jabari hasn't gone smoothly as you as you would have hoped for over a two, three-year span. Yeah. Now you're kind of rushing things, trying to make patchwork of a team, adding in these veterans who are going to help for sure, but it has to be a team concept. Yeah. Over under 29 and a half. I got him at 27. 27 wins? If that team wins 27 games, <laughs> there's going to be some heads rolling in that Houston uh, office. Is it going to be the front office? Or that so you're 30 what? wins. 30 wins? They can't win anything less than 35 games. Or stuff like, forget my language, but stuff's going to happen. Like, yeah. What? No. Now that, now so see, they now that's jump, an answer, Kelly. So they got to jump 15 games. There has to be a legitimate, legit, yeah, because, like, if you would have added, let's say, like, if it was just James that came back, there's, because of the emotional aspect, if they would have gotten to, like, 30, 34 wins and at least flutter with the playing, yeah, cool. But you adding, like, four or five veterans now to a team that has talented young players, you have to make a real impact. And this is, this, they, they've called this phase two for a long time, right? Yeah. And phase two as I understand it, is getting back to the postseason. Yeah. OKC jumped 16 games yeah. from 24 to 40. Exactly. A similar type jump like that. And the, that's like the that. hope for that. Right. And I, I think it all lies within players like Jalen Green right. and not necessarily Fred Van Vliet. And my concern okay. is that's, that's fair. my concern is those guys losing the runway yeah. to get to the point <clears throat> where they can be the lead dog or whatever. Yeah. Like, what happens? All right, so you, Van Vliet, yep. Brooks, yep. Is Lawndale the center. Or is uh, Shangun I think Shangun is Shangun. Just, should. I, th I think Shangun, Shangun should I think Shangun be. Is he be. actually seven foot now? I don't think he's seven feet. I, I think he's more like six eleven. Okay, that's six, close. That's taller six, than ten and a half. He's not six eight. No, he's not six eight, six nine. He, All right. he definitely grew something. So okay, so you've got that. So like Jalen Green is your two. Yep. Dylan yeah. is your three. Jabari, your three. Jabari, Jabari is your four. Is your four. Shangun four. is your five. So and then coming off the bench, now you got Londale. I like got the bench a lot though. Right, the bench is actually good. You got Ahmed. You got Kevin Porter. You got Tari. You got Tate. And you got Londo. That's going to push the energy. starters. That's yeah. a lot of energy. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Do you guys believe in Jalen Green? Like, do you think Jalen Green has got, like, the thing? Like, does he have it? It's a killer yeah, question. He has, he has something. Well, I mean, he's got an uh, amazing first step, Amazing right? first step, and he has, like, the upside is still through the roof. Yeah. But I just think that the past two years have been a disservice to him because he wasn't put in the best position to succeed. He had to play alongside Kevin Porter Jr., who's not a, a natural playmaker, and who also was trying to develop his own, sure. you know, his own way. And now, last season, kind of the efficiency it dropped a little bit. He did improve on his floaters, getting to his mid range, and and the three is still good enough for me to, to believe in him long term. But defensively, I need to see. He like, doesn't have the body. He's 195 now, is what I heard. So he, I need he's to so see. Skinny, man. I need to see how that translates to. Just being in front of the ball handler and just not getting lost. Like Houston's biggest problem last season was they ball watched fault and they never, mm. you know, put. Oh, two and that together. won't happen now. No, I mean, you're gonna be on the bench. I, that I think that they're gonna be a, a better defensive team. They have to because they're gonna be more organized. Yeah. Ime is a really, really yeah. solid coach, and you won't have to worry about him not having like the locker room's ear. Yeah, they, yeah. which is what they needed. 
Right. But I just – I don't know if Jalen Green's that guy for me, and it's because of his body, largely because of his body. Uh, but now Dylan Brooks, you know he, who he's likes – He's the wall card. Dylan Brooks is Dylan Brooks' favorite player. That's is true. Is he supposed to lose shots to Jalen Green? No, but I, I, I mean <sighs> – the thing with Dylan Brooks is you that you get where I'm coming from. I know it. Yeah, I know. I know what you mean. I Van know what you Vliet, mean. Van Vliet doesn't need the ball in his hands to be effective. Dylan Brooks is better off when the ball is not in his hands. I get the vision. Yeah. You want Jabari and you want Jalen Green and you want Alfred Shingun yeah. running your it's a offense. Feature. Yeah. Great. But the reality is, Dylan Brooks. How many times a game did he shoot last year as the worst shooter in the league? I just, like, 15, 16 times a yep. game. Yep. That is. A problem, and he just got twenty million dollars a season. Yeah, it's so, a problem. So I, I do think there is a world where Dylan comes in and he kind of galvanizes those young guys because he's going to get in your face. He doesn't care. And now he has twenty million dollars to like eighty million dollars to his name, so he doesn't really care if you were the number two pick, number three I, pick. I think Dylan Brooks is a good pickup. I think he would have been a better pickup for a team like Cleveland because Cleveland needs yeah. an asshole. They do. They yeah. they need somebody with a little bit of like some grit and willing to, you know, yeah. be not dirty, but he is dirty. But they didn't need a dirty player. They needed the a guy. Who, yeah, got you. yeah, yeah. I think there's teams that need it. Houston is a little bit weird to me just because of the youth, right? Because he's now almost in a similar situation to like two years ago in Memphis, mm -hmm. right? right? But he's now older. Like so, Dylan Brooks knows that if this. This Houston Rockets team winds up being good. It's going to be three years from now. Yeah, and he won't be on the team. Yeah. So and what do you think he's going to do? He's going to go into business for himself, and I think it's going to ultimately hamper the development of those young guys. So, I think offensively is the biggest question mark for me with Dylan, just because of how last season he had a down year. Like he took bad shots. He's got an ugly jumper. This jumper is horrific, and you know the, the antics on social media. Just everything just compounded to one big blob, and. The Rockets took on that blob, and they gave it $80 million. Mm -hmm. So there's, <laughs> you better come in and kind of raise the, the temperature of that group. But it was chaos last season. Right. And you can't always fix chaos by adding a, a wild card. Yeah. You need structure. So I think giving him $80 million might he, he might be playing the uh, Westbrook theme song, Now I Do What I Want. Yeah. I, I hope it goes the other way, though. I hope Dylan Brooks is like, you know what? I know what they paid me for. And let me try to be that guy. Like, I hope he doesn't I, – I hope it's not – He was in a great situation in Memphis. Well, but – Was he not? Th no, I mean, he was on an expiring well, deal. Was and it knew great, he wasn't, though? He was an expiring deal and knew he wasn't coming back. But the look at how he But the pecking order left. should have been established, though, like with the kind of players that sure. he was on that roster sure. with. And yet, and yet, he did not. It's because of, uh, you know, like people like Keith Parrish say Dylan Brooks is not as bad as you think. <laughs> they just spread propaganda. And we all just believe it. You need a guy to take shots. You need a guy to miss 16 shots a game. I, I just don't think so. I, I, I like the defense. Defense I is like, great. I like that. that I mean, the Rockets again, definitely need who's that. Who's going to guard LeBron for Memphis, right? Like, Dylan Brooks was the answer to that question. Yeah. And I think Dylan Brooks well, we saw that been, story. Dylan Brooks could have <laughs> been the answer to that question uh, yeah. for Cleveland. He could have right. been the answer to that question. And not LeBron, but that, that idea of a player. He could have been that answer for a lot of teams. Now, not at the money. Yeah. Because yeah. he, got, he got paid. Got it. Yeah. Congratulations. But this sucks for the Houston youth. It is not going to go well. Yeah, I don't like that. And for it, I mean, it kind of feels like they're throwing the, the reboot, like the, the development plan away. Yeah. Yeah. This is, uh, which is, which is, this wrong. is classic front office trying to save their job and yeah. instead of saying well, we had a plan. It's, let's commit it's to ownership. It. And it's ownership. It's right. ownership stepping in and saying, hey, right. losing sucks. You got to win now. Please That's stop. Yeah. Stop this now because I would like to win basketball games. Okay. And, yeah. All right. The Rockets so. have bummed me out, though. Sorry, Kelly. <laughs> yeah, you, the Rockets. Join the quad. I was going to say. <laughs> okay. So I kind of think Dallas, just because of Luka, can still make the play in. Well, I – Can yeah, still be in the yeah. top ten. They're talented enough to do so. Yeah. 